Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call the monthly meeting of the Burlington Area School District School Board uh, to order. Um, if we'd all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we do the roll call, for those um, attending, I apologize for the delay in the start. We had two uh, closed session meetings before this that ran long. So uh, again, I appreciate everyone staying with us and uh, we'll move forward. Toby, will you do the roll call vote, please? Peter Turk. Here. Barry Schmeling. Here. Marlo Braun. Here. Taylor Bouchard. Here. Kevin Bird. Here. Roseanne Hahn. Here. Susan Kessler. Here. Thank you. Thanks, Toby. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our previous meetings. I move we so approve moved. minutes. Second. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, I, I ask for a roll call vote. Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yes. Susan? Yes. Thank you. Next on our agenda are communications. Uh, first, our citizen comments through our board comments. Um, as you, um, the, everyone can see, uh, there are attached to our um, agenda public comment in the form of 67 different emails. So thank you everyone in the public who sent comments to the board. I'll repeat this again. We know, I know we said this a number of times, but board members read these emails. Um, we appreciate them. Um, I, I, I did some tallying. The, uh, you know, the 67 emails came from 29 different people. So thank you for the, the valuable input. Um, they're centered around three different topics. Uh, mass optional, which we, we talked about last meeting, at least for our summer and, and community ed programs. Uh, board going back in person and critical race theory. I'll also note, in addition, uh, Bonnie Ketterhagen delivered to my house 48 index cards from citizens, which I appreciated reading. Um, and they were uniformly along the topic of the board going back in person. So uh, Bonnie, thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, um, board members uh, know I received those. They were uh, signed and the addresses of all the uh, people who wrote the index cards were on there. Um, I would comment that say that all comments should have their name and address so that they're district residents, because if they're not, I personally will not read them. Yeah, and, and Kevin, I appreciate that. And we, you will notice later on in our agenda, we are gonna talk, we added that as a specific agenda item for action, um, public comment at board meetings. And then we're also gonna talk about potentially how we're gonna handle board comments if we just decide in this meeting to go back in person next month or when we go back in person, I think we should talk about how we wanna handle board comments. Oh, so board comments. thanks for bringing that up. Um, we, next on our, our item is correspondence and board communication. And I guess before other board members chime in, um, I just want to make sure that, uh, the public knows that our, um, school board met in closed session earlier with legal counsel and following advice from our legal counsel, the district intends to, um, implement our corrective action plan as written to meet the needs and include students, parents, and staff members. The district's going to work through details so that our any community equity team that we form, as outlined in our corrective action plan, is both product productive and it moves the district forward in our efforts as described in our, our corrective action plan. Any other board members have any uh, comments or correspondence they want to share? I do. Roseanne, yeah, please. Uh, last Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I was on uh, line in, in a virtual meeting with the National Association of School Boards. And uh, we got to hear Miguel Cardona, who is our new Secretary of Education in the new administration. So we got to hear a lot of things. And while we were visiting with him, 
uh, with, we found out Wisconsin was going to get 4.2 billion more dollars uh, to use. And we we're all hoping that some of that will go for education. Um, it was interesting, um, he, he gave us some interesting things. 57% uh, of parents in the United States that answered this uh, thing or uh, answered this um, paper uh, were satisfied with how the schools are being run. 32 were not, 32%. Vouchers, 49% of the people uh, asked, opposed them, 42 approved them. We got to hear Tricia Yearwood, who is a country Western singer, uh, talk about the power of music education. And it was very, very interesting. Um, enjoyed it and she compared it to being in sports. It's something you can do your whole life. Uh, Thursday and Friday were very special because we got to meet with our own representatives in Washington. So we were had uh, David Bagley, who was for Mark Kokan, and Ma uh, Brian Style was Will Neitzel. And uh, then we talked to Glenn Grothman in person, and he was quite the guy. He was the longest session, but there were three things we talked about because the people who went up there were our president, Sue Today, our first vice president, uh, Barb Herzog, and me. I'm the second vice president. So there were three topics. The first one was broadband. And even in Wisconsin, I found this surprising. I know way up north they have trouble getting broadband, but Door County, um, the president lives in Door County, and she said she has to pay a fortune to get broadband brought to her house. Uh, so they even had to have hotspots for the kids to use during the time of when they were not in person. So we talked a lot about that. The next thing was shortage of teachers, and that is really getting to be a problem. A lot of kids, people are not going into education. Some of them are not staying. And we discussed what uh, districts could do to uh, maintain teachers or maybe home grow them from homegrown right here and have them come back to our district. Uh, I was proud to say that, that Burlington doesn't have a great big turnover of teachers. And the other one was special, special ed. We need more money for special ed. Every single school district in Wisconsin does, and that's who, we're, who we were talking about. Um, I know Burlington had to come up with $5 million extra dollars for, for a special ed this year, besides what we already had in the budget. And that $5 million comes right out of the regular fund for the regular kids. So it, it's a problem. And it was interesting when the federal government first said they were going to help with um, special ed, they predicted that they would help 40%. And right now they're helping 16%. So we're, we're looking for that. Um, I was proud to also talk about the special ed kids. They were thrilled to hear about our pack house. They said, oh my gosh, we've never heard of anything like that. Preparing the kids for life after, but you know, they can be there from 18 to 21. And it's such a wonderful program. And um, so I know Glenn Grofman wants more information on that. And I'll be meeting with him again in January, but then we'll be in person. So I want to do that. Okay, then I left there, got in my car on Friday noon and drove up to Madison for a meeting of WASB. And there we got to hear Stephanie Hauser, who is the new WIAA president, the first time there was ever a woman in charge of the sporting, everything in sports. Very, very interesting person. Uh, sharp, and I had talked to Eric Klitzweig before I went to find out if there were any questions he wanted me to ask her, and uh, he was real thrilled with her too. And um, so anyway, it was a, a wonderful four days, and I was happy to represent Burlington and Wisconsin. That's it. Yeah, no, Roseanne, let's just say this. Thanks for your advocacy, and uh, your topics are ones that I know as a board we've talked about, but awesome. Yeah, the Thank really you. important things. Yeah. Great job, Roseanne. Thank you. Any other board members have anything they want to share? Any communications? Uh, Peter, um, I will go ahead and take the opportunity to read one of the community letters. Um, I don't think we can do that. Why not? Peter, didn't she just say we're not supposed to read letters? Otherwise, we all should get the opportunity to do that. Peter, we talked what? about that. What's, what's the, what's going to be about that? We had this discussion. Yeah. I, the, I mean, it's a chance here for board members to share, to share communication, I think, and report. Um, I agree. I'd rather us not read letters because I think it's, if we read one, it's giving un, undue weight to one letter. But... I'm going to let Marlo decide that on his own. I, I think it's within his right to do it. Okay. He wants to go forward. 
Thank you. Um, this is from Misty Gilbert, who does live in the district. Um, board members, over the past few months, I have had the opportunity to talk to a wide to a wide array of parents in our community. The majority of them are frustrated and scared. I completely understand because those are my feelings also. The frustration seems to stem from not feeling as though they are being heard. Please resume in-person school board meetings and put an end to mandatory masking. COVID numbers are rapidly declining, mandates are falling, and more and more businesses and schools are making masks optional. Given the current climate of Burlington, most people are afraid to speak out. I have made it pretty clear that I am not afraid to speak, but afraid for the future of my children in BASD. I have years of experience in early childhood education and have worked with a diverse group of individuals as an administrator of an assisted living facility. I have cared for people of all races, religions, disabilities, and backgrounds. And I can tell you that I do recognize the problem in our schools. I do not feel this problem will be solved by capitulating to BCDR and their demands, labeling our community and the majority of its citizens as racist is not true or productive. I feel the problems need to be attacked as a issue of leadership, family outreach and building community. I am aware of the DPI order that BCDR's leader or a representative must sit on the community equity team if your position is to comply, please consider adding equally vocal parents and community members to the team as well. The conversation requires balance. The parents of the community want to be heard, respectfully, Misty. Um, as a follow-up to some of the concerns, please note that my reading of the community letters does not carry any weight. I am not biased in one sense of the of the form of the word, however you want to read that, um, but everybody deserves to be heard. Um, and, you know, they they need to feel that they have been heard. So, thank you. But everyone Carlo, wasn't heard, I, just one person was heard. That's, I was going to say the same thing, only one person. Okay. You chose that person. You didn't give any of us a chance to choose a person either. Every single person on this board reads all those letters, Marlo. You talk okay. about balance. You talked about balance in that letter. You're not giving a, a balance to this board by doing that, and it's not fair. Okay, Susan, I uh, hear what. No, hold on. Okay, Susan, yeah, I, I'm gonna cut on. you guys off right there. I, I think we gotta. We need to stop this debate. I mean, I think it, it's it's too much, uh, Marlo. I, I gave you the chance to read the letter, but I, I, I told you I disagreed. I think it's a bad idea. But let's, okay. I, I don't think this is moving us forward on communication because we're, we're, we're going down a rabbit hole here. I want to just stop it. I, I know Susan got the last word, but you, you, we're gonna, I, I'd like us to move on to the, the superintendent's uh, report at this point. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Um, so I don't have a lot, but there are a few things that I did want to highlight for the board. Uh, one is that community education is uh, up and running and is strong. In, in fact, we have record numbers and the group working in community ed and particularly Becky Sake et al as their director, uh, there's, there's just a lot of happy faces, a lot of excitement. Kids are doing lots of amazing things. And so it's all happening at BHS. That's where it's located. If you want to be able to see any of that, uh, there is a lot of joy being had in community ed uh, to, to the point of being record numbers. Uh, also wanted to once again extend my appreciation to the board for allowing me to serve on the Wisconsin School Music Association board. Uh, as you know, I'm the president elect uh, for that organization and uh, we have two meetings a year, one in December, one in June, and it just so happens that that meeting's going on now um, and then for the next two days. And so just want to again offer my appreciation because I know that by you granting me the opportunity to represent Burlington there, it also means that I'm not necessarily here at that same point in time. Uh, just a reminder, a couple of upcoming dates then, June 28th, you just agreed that uh, there will be a meeting. Um, and then on July 12th also is the regular monthly meeting. Also of note, uh, we've made the final determination that the district office will, will vacate 100 North Kane Street in the final week of July. And so uh, we will, uh, most of us will find temporary homes at BHS. 
uh, kind of scattered around, but uh, we'll make sure that people know where we are and how to get a hold of us. So that's going to be happening in late July. And then also in late July, the 28th, 29th, and 30th, uh, for the first time now in about a year and a half, uh, WASDA, the School District Administrators Association, the Superintendents Association, will be having a live and in-person meeting, and that will be the three-day legal seminar. And if there's been any topic uh, that has been close to everyone in the last 12 to 18 months, it's all of the immense changes in the law that are happening so rapidly. So I'll be there and representing uh, Burlington, hopefully well as as well. Um, and so those are just a few updates and some things going on in the immediate next few weeks. So thank you. I just wanted to add something to his report. <laughs> and that is when I was up at Madison this last weekend, um, we talked about that music department or the music committee that he's on and where they all said, oh, Roseanne, your superintendent is such a wonderful addition to that uh, committee. So we're proud of you, Steve. Thank you, Roseanne. Thanks for sharing that too, Roseanne. Um, Taylor, um, it's time for the uh, business office report. Will you do the honors, please? Oh, Taylor, I think you're muted. I don't know if, if, if uh... Yep, sorry. Um, May 2021 bank statement reconciliation report uh, for revenues, total beginning cash on hand. Uh, I'm sorry, total beginning cash on hand, uh, $441,707.55. Uh, under revenue deposits, total deposits equals $8,511,661.80, uh, which leave total available cash on hand, $8,953,609, uh, I'm sorry, $8,953,369.50. Uh, total expenditures, uh, expenditures withdrawals, uh, total withdrawals was $7,615,912.80. Total ending cash on hand is uh, $1,337,456.55. That, of course, balances. So I make a motion that we approve the May 2021 bank statement uh, reconciliation report. Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a roll call vote. Peter? Yes. Barry? Marlowe? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? And Susan? Yes. Thank you. Um, I will make a motion to be approved in May 2021, uh, check register. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the May 2021 check register. Any discussion? Hearing Proceed. none? Oh, Proceed. go ahead. Say that again, Kevin. I, I couldn't hear you. It's bills. Yeah, this is the pain of the bills, exactly. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, Toby, will you give us a roll call vote, please? Peter? Yes. Mary? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? And Susan? Yes. Thanks, Toby. We'll move on to the personnel section on the agenda. Um, earlier this evening, the personnel committee met. And Steve, will you walk us through the Certified and non-certified staff resignations, retirements, and terminations. Yes, thank you, Peter. We had in certified staff, there are three resignations this month, uh, people moving on to some other uh, life adventures. And that includes Carly Barforth, BHS counselor, Sarah Flygar, Waller Elementary General Music, and Brianna Harris, Karcher Middle School Special Education. In our non-certified staff, uh, we have one, uh, retirement, and that is custodian Ralph Frank from Cooper. The rest are instructional or special education aid resignations, and those include Raymond Alvarez from Carcher Middle School, Danielle Debink from Waller Elementary, Andy Endel from BHS, Sarah Hopkins Neeson from BHS, Ellen Strang from BHS, Stang, sorry, Brenda Story from Dyer, 
and Kathleen Straub from Waller. And again, just so that other people know, we there's been a lot of movement in our special education aides and from part-time to full-time. And the next group of seven uh, that I'm gonna read, those positions have been eliminated. That's part of our work uh, to develop some attrition as we move forward. And that includes the following special education aides, Allison Anders from Cooper, Jennifer Burrow from Waller, Janet Chambers from Cooper, Geraldine Krause from Waller, Kelly Rintelman Maloney from Dyer, Nikki Smith from Waller, and Alma Westcott from Cooper. So there's a total of 15 in the non-certified staff. Thanks, Steve. I guess I'd entertain a motion to approve those resignations, retirements, and terminations. So moved. So moved. And a second, please. Second. Thanks, Susan. Um, motion has been made and seconded. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote? Peter? Yes. Mary? Yes. Marlowe? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yes. And Susan? Yes. Thank you. Steve, we, we have appointments for certified and non-certified certified staff that uh, we discussed during personnel. Could you go through those, please? Yes, we are excited to welcome the five following certified staff members. Sydney Bachelor at Waller Elementary for kindergarten. Nicole DeLastis at BHS for school. <laughs> Kim Kujawa, Tim Kujawa at BHS as a school counselor. Mallory Schmidt, who's gonna be at Cooper Dyer and Lyons as an ELL teacher. And Michael Zalecki at BHS teaching business education. And then we have a total of eight non-certified staff appointments. Two of them are school year folks, and that's Jennifer Duty at Lyons Center Elementary as a special education aide, and Angela Herbeck, who will be a part-time custodian for the district. The following six are folks who are being hired as community education instructors. That includes Grace Klassen, Carson Skiles, Keegan Skiles, Abigail Runkle, Gage Taylor, and Kate Tully. I move Thanks. we approve the appointments of the certified and non-certified staff. Second. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote, please. Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yes. Susan? Yes. Thank you. All right, next in the agenda, we have uh, donations to go through. Um, Steve, will you walk us through those, please? So we had a total of nine donations in the past month. And it's always exciting to be able to accept these. Um, there were eight that came into Burlington High School specifically. That was $2,000 from Aurora Burlington Lakeland Medical Staff as a scholarship. Um, $3,000 from BHS Athletics Soccer Program warm-up uniforms. That's, that's coming from uh, the High School Athletic Association. $222, the FFA for Liberty Steel and Wire in Peoria. Uh, from, from Quick Trip to the FFA, $332.07. From John and Leslie Hotved for the Coral Club, that was $250. The Burlington Coaches Association donated $200 to National Honor Society. And Educators Credit Union, $500 to WBSD. And Nobius Press, $250 to WSB. So the high school, that was a $6,754 uh, donation from those various community members. And then Karcher Middle School, at the end of the year, there was some teacher appreciation. And so the parents of grades, it's three, five, seven, and eight, just the way that students were uh, in that building this year. Uh, those parents in total donated uh, $820 uh, during teacher appreciation week. And we just wanted to, to point that out and say thank you as well. I move we approve these very generous donations from the community. I second the motion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to approve the donations. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, a call for a roll call vote. 
Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yeah. Susan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have three items for student travel. Steve, maybe you can walk us through these items. Yes, as you know, uh, we're, we're, we're moving forward now, long awaited for the reinstatement of extended and overnight trips that uh, require board approval. The FFA has three upcoming trips that they would ask for your approval for. That's July 5 through 8. There are six students that will be attending the state conference in Madison. Uh, later in July, the 19th to 21st, that's 12 students attending um, the FFA Top 12 program in Green Bay. And then in August from the 23rd to 6th, it's six students uh, headed over to Potosi, Wisconsin, which is their officer retreat. So three different uh, approvals, all from FFA. I make a motion that we accept the travel. Second. Okay. Okay, hey, motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yes. Susan? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. On the agenda next is we have four items for action. The first of these is a holdover from last week's meeting. Um, it's a discussion, um, and potentially action on the position, or adding position, a coordinator of culturally relevant practices and student uh, engagement. And uh, board members, last meeting, we, you may recall, we talked about having a um, job description prepared and the administration came through with that and also for the new uh, human resources director. Um, we received that also, which we approved last meeting. Um, so I guess I, Steve, do you want to make any comments on this position or should we, uh, I guess I throw it open to board members to, for discussion. Uh, it's certainly welcome the discussion of the board. Uh, I will say that there is, um, some potential, you know, lots of discussions this week. Some came through board comments, uh, as well, you know, suggesting we look at other options, or we look at other FTE allocations, or it's too much too fast. And so I, I did want to mention that uh, as part of our corrective action with DPI, if you felt that it was more appropriate, for example, that we, uh, through our equity audits, engage in some partnership there as a way to uh, address some of the work that we might need to do going forward. Certainly uh, that's an option as well, but uh, just articulating some of what, what came through the comments that I know you've, you've read and probably been thinking about. Well, I know, I know that uh, in Madison and, and nationally, they've been talking about the learning gap. And uh, from the time the kids were not in school, there is this learning gap. They just didn't keep up the way we hoped they would. Uh, and I could kind of read some of the things into that position, like they might be working with something like that too. I don't know, did I read that incorrectly or is that part of your thought process as to what this person would do? Uh, there is definitely an element to that. Um, I know that there's there's quite a bit of question around the idea of, of what, what all might be encompassed in a role like that. Tried to spell as much of that out uh, as possible in the job description, but certainly the reality is um, community engagement with kids, with families, uh, is, is a big part of it, uh, no doubt. And it's something that we all do and we're all responsible for. It's just a more targeted effort. Um, and, and I think that it's hard to draw sort of causation into the idea of why people might struggle with school. Uh, but certainly the, the post COVID reality is likely to feel different. And I'm not sure we're even there yet. So Steve, am I understanding that you might be thinking we should potentially pause on this until we find out some of our audit results? Or were you just saying that was a possibility? I think that's one option for the board to consider. I know that uh, I, you know, I listened to all of the commentary last week. Again, I read all the same uh, board comments that you read. And if your sense is perhaps now is either not the time, not the right time, you're unsure of 
uh, the job description, how it might work. I do think that there are other ways as some of the board comments suggested. And if that's something that you want for us to consider, uh, we, we can certainly do that. Uh, reality is, as you know, we, we will have two audits that will have to be conducted as part of the corrective action. I would imagine that those audits are going to both discover some things that we might already know and anticipate, as well as maybe some things that we don't. Uh, it's pretty rare, frankly, for a school district to dive as deeply into the finite data as an audit like this will. That's partly why they, they come with a pretty hefty cost. Uh, having said that, uh, it also might behoove us and be beneficial to partner uh, with you know, the persons doing the audits so that we are able to, on the back end, be more effective in our support for kids. So just, an, just another option that I wanna make sure you know, people have heard. Timing-wise, those audits aren't gonna be done until the end of summer, um, which would make it tough to hire this for fall. What sort of time frame would you see implementing this position post audit if you felt it was, if the board comes together and feels it's necessary? So if I understand, you're, you're just kind of wondering about if, if the board actually were to say, move forward with that, what would kind of be the timeline? Is that it? Given the school will have already started, yes. Yeah, I, it would be tough. Uh, there's no doubt, Barry. I think, you know, if, if people don't um, necessarily know, we the, the hiring and the cycle of bringing onboarding people and also people leaving is, is really unique in education. It, it's concentrated into a couple of months. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that people don't come and go during the school year, but there's, a, there's certainly a reason that you hear more names in June and July than you do in November. We just don't operate like that. So that would be also perhaps another layer or burden. Uh, we, we might experience that with the human resources position as well, just the timing. Uh, might not be ideal. So we'll we'll have to learn as we go through that process to who who's out there and what the level of interest is. Sometimes you just don't know until you do it. Um, but I think it is a reasonable point that you make that the timing of hiring could potentially be not to our benefit. Other board members, do you have thoughts? I guess it's, I think it's a good, a good format to have is just kind of an open discussion about this position or potentially going in a different direction. Because we do have significant needs that we're gonna to have to meet related to our corrective action plan and our ongoing work in equity. And uh, we, something will need to be done. Um, we talked about this last meetings that, that this is a, will be a huge burden on administrative team. And, um, I kind of like the idea that Steve said that maybe we wouldn't go right into hiring that person, but maybe, you know, see what happens with all this that's going on and maybe partner with some of the people that we're paying a lot of money to, to do this audit. Maybe I, I kind of like that idea right now. I mean, I've already kind of made my comments pretty plain last week. Um, I would rather see this money spent in areas of reading, math and science. Um, personally, I feel this is just a knee-jerk reaction to everything that's gone over the last year. Um, as a board, it's okay to, to say no sometimes to administrative desires or wants. Um, so I'll throw that out there. Um, I mean, I guess what happens, let's say you do hire this, what happens three years from now, and we don't really see any type of improvement in, in the areas that you're specifically looking at in terms of, you know, their, their measures of uh, success or their primary functions or their, you know, specific job or district specific functions. I mean, I mean, the position is accountable to the superintendent. So I guess from a board accountability standpoint, I mean, what, I guess, what do, what do we do in terms of this position? I mean, how do we, I mean, are we holding the superintendent accountable for this, um, for whether the, it's the success or failure of this position? Um, I mean, because I know that, again, chain of command, 
and you know, superintendent reports to the board. Uh, we kind of stay more hands off when it comes up to the other administrators. Fine, but again, I'm, I'm guess I'm looking at it from an accountability standpoint, and I'm not just picking on this position. I'm talking about all positions too. But as we're talking about this position, I'll just use it as an example. Yeah, that's a good point, Taylor. I guess I'll I'll point back to what Connie said last meeting. Equity is going to be the work of the entire administrative staff. Our teachers, support staff, it's going to be have to be done by everybody in the board. And it's going to have to be everyone's going to be doing it. But as far as accountability goes, yes, the superintendent is accountable to the board. So that ultimately it'll be the superintendent's job to make progress in this area. Um, and that's who we're going to be talking to. Um, and it, as far as it, it, it is challenging to measure because it's somewhat of an intangible, but this is, this is the work that's in front of us and it needs to be done. I'm a strong believer that I would rather see more counselors at the elementary and middle school level than to add this position. Because I think over the term that I've been on the school board, we've cut funding for those people and those kids that are going through tough times in life are going to talk to a counselor before they're going to talk to a teacher. And certainly before they're going to talk to a director of equity or go directly to school administration, these kids get in contact with these counselors on a regular basis. And I think that's really important that they have someone that's non-biased that they feel comfortable with and I would much rather see our money spent in that area, given the times we're dealing with, than for a director of equity. I agree. No, thanks, Kevin. Does other board members have thoughts on this? And I, I guess it can be in relationship to specifically this, this position of director of equity. But also, like Steve mentioned, too, bringing on a consultant to help with uh, our equity work. Not knowing what, not knowing what the uh, accountability end of these audits will be. What sort of does anyone know? What sort of time frame we have for action once an audit is done? We are, we are we in another 30-day window or a 60-day window? Or is this just things we should be working on going forward? Because I share the concern that administration's already up to their eyeballs in tasks. Um, and it's not just an administrative thing. I agree with you, Peter. I agree with what Connie said last meeting about equity is all of our work. It's the community's work. I agree with that wholeheartedly. But specifically, this is going to impact our administrators. And I, Kevin, I like what you're saying about um, having more people in the schools, more counselors to help these kids, but they aren't going to lighten the administrative load at all. So it's a tough spot to be in. I think Barry, if, if, I'm, if I may attempt to address the question that was in there about sort of the time frame, And um, we, so we do by June 30th, have to have a recommendation for who will conduct the audits to DPI. DPI has to then approve them. And we have to have those contracts signed uh, by the end of the month. And so we've been working uh, as quickly as possible, but also attempting to do our very best due diligence to ensure that the product uh, will be there. And so for example, the two audits that are required, one is a focus on discipline and one is one was just named a comprehensive audit. And so the discipline one, uh, we were able to locate uh, through you know, recommendations and, and working through a gentleman by the name of Dan Lawson. He is affiliated with UCLA. He also works as an independent consultant and does specifically disciplinary audits for, for schools. And so um, Dan will begin that essentially now. Uh, and then 
should have something relatively complete by the time school starts. And one of his responsibilities will be to present to you as a board, his findings. The other, the other group that we're talking to in terms of a comprehensive audit is the integrated comprehensive services for equity team of Colleen Capper, doctors Colleen Capper and Elaine Futura who work at UW-Madison and UW-Milwaukee, uh, respectively. And they are, are known nationally for their work around audits and comprehensive audits. And so one of the reasons that uh, we have gravitated toward them is that they're local, that they understand Wisconsin, they understand particularly Southeast Wisconsin. And so we're, we have more confidence in the ability to work with them and potentially work with them long-term. And so they would anticipate that their work, should we go that route, uh, would be complete in the early fall. And then hopefully, uh, if it would be of the purview to the board, we would cycle into a, a little bit more of an ongoing engagement and or partnership with them so that we can work to execute what is found in the audit. Because I think that's the unknown at this point in time is what what will be found, um, and that I think that's that's kind of the point of of DPI requiring us to do that very thing. So the timing would be that you know come early fall we would hopefully have kind of a roadmap in front of us to lean on and then to be able to partner going forward. And I'm sorry, Connie was going to add something there. I was just going to add, you know, Barry that we are required to have ongoing sort of progress monitoring and reporting to the DPI as part of the process as well. So once we have completed those audits, have a plan with some actionable steps, then we will be checking in with the DPI to report on our progress. So that there isn't necessarily another 30 day uh, window, but there will be an expectation that we do follow up and um, describe, you know, what we were doing and to let the DPI know. Excellent. Thank you both. Um, so, yeah, um, I guess this is again looking at like the knowledge, skills, ability, or uh, I'm sorry, the primary functions um, and job functions, I guess. So talking about data, I mean, how what and how will statistical data be openly available to prove that the program is actually working in a non-biased way? That's a question. You're talking about if we were to have the, the position, Taylor? Yeah, 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 I'm sorry, I should clarify. Yeah, so if we were to implement this position, um, I, guess, I guess what data are we going to I guess make readily readily available to, I guess the public to show like yes this this position is working here's the progress that that is being accomplished from this, um, here's where we need improvements. Um, this, there are there aren't any improvements. I guess I'm just looking at it from that standpoint. Oh, well, I I mean I would assert that one of the first things that a person in that position would do would be to create sort of a data profile. So it would be whether it's discipline, attendance, grades, engagement in activities. And we might then at some point pull, you know, half a dozen benchmark data points to say, okay, here's our starting point. This is ground zero. Now, where do we go from here? And so those, those are not data points that are closely being monitored right now. There's some general idea, but as, as you all know, we have mounds and mounds of data that we, we collect, could collect, should be potentially looking at. And so I think that that would be something that, you know, if the board said, yeah, we, we feel there's a need for this position, then we would sit down and start, you know, really kind of saying, okay, well, what are the things we want to measure? And that might be through a conversation with board members. Are there specific things that you want to know that you want to monitor going forward? I can tell you from, from just my position working in the schools, the, the highlighted points are, are usually all around discipline. What are the suspension rates? What's the truancy rates? What are those academic gaps? And, and to really study them. We, we look at that, but probably not with the level of detail that somebody who is specifically tasked with that would. 
So I guess kind of a, a miniature follow-up to that question. I guess how is the position going to be involved in staff, student, uh, in staff and student discipline? Also in regards to hiring or termination or let's say an appeals process. Um, I guess, where do you see that or this position fitting into, I guess, that kind of... Well, as it is right now, if there is a situation at a school and a principal is looking to collaborate with another administrator, most of the time that calls comes to either Connie or me. And so a lot of times those calls involve race related issues. Um, it might be a EL student or a student with special, uh, special needs, could be a student that's living in poverty. Um, any, anything that's potentially a, a sort of a complicating factor. Uh, it might be that there's a student whose parents are experiencing a divorce and they're just looking for extra support. And so I think in, in some ways, a position like this, that could be somebody who aids in those conversations and provides continuity across the buildings. That's where that, that's where that line item comes from. So are we looking for a motion to approve or disapprove this position? Yeah, Kevin, let's uh, that that let, let's uh, move forward with that. It's a good idea. A motion we do not approve this position. Second. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded that we do not go forward with a, excuse me, the the, the coordinator of culturally relevant practices and student engagement. Any further discussion? I just got a question for oh. Steve. Um, how much longer are we going to be affiliated with the National Equity Project that we are that we're doing with now? Are they are we done pretty soon, or are they going to be with us for a while longer? It's a good question, Roseanne. Um, when the DPI Corrective Action came out, uh, we we really believed that in order to get our audit done, that we would need to maintain our relationship and partnership with National Equity Project. Now, one of the challenges in working with them is that they're not local. And by local, I mean to the state of Wisconsin. They're not in the Midwest. So that is definitely um, not to our advantage. When we talk about the potential of working with Capper and Futura and their ICS model, that is local and that would be preferable to us and so we are looking at whether or not that's a better route, but again, we, we can't do it all. And so if, if the ICS team is gonna conduct or end up being the, the chosen group to conduct our comprehensive audit, I think both Connie and I would say that we'd recommend to the board that we partner with them going forward, which would mean we potentially wouldn't continue our partnership with National Equity Project just because there's cost implications with, with all of these. You have to, I think you have to pick and choose and align yourself to something that's gonna work. And so there's always an advantage to, to being more local than not, um, but there's also uh, a different approach given the comprehensive audit that they would potentially be doing with us as well. And so this, it's moving kind of kind of quick. I mean, DPI gave us 30 days and basically said, you gotta get these contracts issued. And so finding people, talking to them, understanding their services, uh, that's the process that we're embarked upon or, or in right now. And I think to your question, Roseanne, that might mean that we would come back and recommend to the board that we would go with uh, the ICS team. And that might mean then that we don't continue with National Equity Project. So are we with them right now? I mean, are we still, are they still affiliated with us right now, the National Equity Project? We are, we're essentially between years. And so we're finishing the 2021 year that we were uh, paid for. And we are beginning to roll into the 21-22 school year, but haven't paid for yet. Okay, well, to be honest, I don't know just how much I enjoyed that group. <laughs> just, I don't know, just my thoughts. I just want to add that some of the work that and the foundation that was set in place with the National Auto Equity Project this first year is certainly work that we can continue, even if our partnership with NEP wouldn't uh, be solidified for another year. Uh, one of the things being, you know, the starting of our student groups and having those being facilitated and our desire to include more student voice. 
um, at other levels. Um, you know, National Equity Project did help us get that up and going this year. I think we have a strong commitment to continue that. So I think there are some elements of the work that we did this first year that we would continue, even if that uh, true partnership didn't exist. Uh, there was some great work done and some good foundations set to propel us forward. Gary, I think you had a comment. Yeah, I'd like to amend the motion that we revisit this after the audits are completed to determine at that point if the position is warranted or if we'll look elsewhere to solve what the findings of the audit. So Sorry. I put that in the form of a motion. Yeah. So, uh, no, you have uh, Kevin's motion has been uh, proposed. Uh, Barry proposes an amendment to Kevin's motion. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. All right. Thanks, Roseanne. Um, so motion has been, uh, excuse me, the amendment has been to the motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion on the amendment now? Okay. I think you should explain exactly what this is going to, well, we're going to vote on the amendment and we need to know exactly what the motion will be. Yeah, I guess I could recap it. If um, what I understand Kevin's motion original was to not um, hire this position at this time. And Barry's amendment to his motion would be to revisit it after the audit is done by the two professors from Wisconsin, which would be the uh, roughly the fall, we're guessing early fall. Actually, the two audits. We've got two separate audits going on, Peter. Right. And I think they'll be done about the same time, Barry. That's my Right. My but guess. one of them is two professors and one of them is one from UCLA. Yes. Thank you. Right. One's a comprehensive audit. The other one is a disciplinary audit. That's the one from UCLA. So thank you for that clarification. So, so that, is there? So that means then after that we will um, decide if we're going to hire or not. So we still may decide not to hire that position. Okay. Just that's correct. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No. Thank you for the clarification. And uh, is there discussion on Barry's amendment? Because we're going to deal with that first, and then we'll go back to the original motion. Okay. Hearing none, I guess I'd ask for a vote on the amendment that Barry proposed. All right. Roll call. Peter. Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlowe? No. Taylor? No. Kevin? No. Roseanne? Yes. Susan? Oh, you're muted, Susan, and you're the deciding vote. Yes. All right, so uh, the amendment passes, and now we can go back and continue discussion on the original motion, which would be Kevin's motion, we're not hiring the position, but now it's been amended to revisit in the fall after the two audits have been completed. Any further discussion on that motion as amended? Okay, would, uh, would you clarify that again, please, for me? Certainly, and uh, I'm, I'm stumbling through it, so be, uh, bear with me. Uh, no, the motion is that we are not today taking action to hire this position, but we will revisit it following the completion of the two audits that are part of our corrective or that are part of our corrective action plan, uh, an audit on discipline and a comprehensive audit. Okay, so the motion is that we are not gonna hire now, but, but we will visit it. That's exactly right. Okay, fine, thank you. You're welcome. Um, any further discussion, folks? Hearing none, I guess I'll ask for a roll call vote. Peter. Yes. Mary. Yes. Marlo. You're muted. Yep, yeah, Marlo, try again. Sorry, um, I'm sorry, clarification, we're voting again. <sighs> yeah, bear with me, Marlo, let me see if I can uh, try to explain it clearer. Um, our, our vote on this motion is that we're not taking action tonight to hire this position, and or we're not hiring this position tonight. But because of the amended motion now, we are gonna revisit uh, taking action either to hire this or hire a consultant in the fall after the two equity audit, or excuse me, not equity audits, excuse me, the two audits are done, the comprehensive and the disciplinary. I think, Peter, I think that the, the motion that were that was out there is we're not hiring now. The amendment already has already been voted on. Correct. So, so, so you're saying your vote said we will hire this position now. That's what your vote was. 
No, my vote is I voted yes that we're not hiring now, Kevin. When but I voted the, yes. No, the amendment has already been voted on. Right. So, so my, my the vote that we're taking now is on my election that we are not hiring now. Correct, as amended by the amendment that we proved. I was gonna say, so the original no, motion, but the original motion doesn't exist anymore. The original motion is amended by the previous vote. So we'll the entire Portland. motion is, we do not hire this position right now, but we will revisit after the audits are done. Have we already voted on that though? Kevin, think, what happens is, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt. So because the amendment was approved, now it gets added okay. to the initial All right. Okay. If Understand. it was not approved, then it would be just your original motion. Does that help, Marlo? Yes. <laughs> Toby, thank you for jumping in because I was making a complete uh, boondoggle of trying to explain that. So thanks. Well, we were all confused because this is unique, but thank yep. you. Yep. <laughs> so the amendment, so the vote is, just to clarify, Peter, if I may step in, that my vote was not the highest position, but we were, um, we, it was amended and approved that we would look at it after the investigations were done. That's, that's correct. Yep. So, so Marlo, up to you. Yes. You're a yes? Yes. Taylor? No. Kevin? No. No. Roseanne? And Susan. Yes. Thank you. Well, what was the vote? I didn't hear. I, I think we missed Roseanne's vote there. I, I couldn't hear you, Roseanne. I said yes. Okay, thank you for the clarification. So we had. So I think it was a five to two on five. yes. And the motion passes, so. Yes. So it will be no hiring yet. Nobody's until being hired. The, until the evaluations are done. Right. And maybe not then, depending upon the outcome. Right. Very true. Very true. Um, let's move on to the second item for action in our agenda, which is the return to in-person meetings. And this is something that obviously um, we've heard a lot from the public on. Um, things have changed quite a bit over the last few months, and things are opening up. Yeah, I can tell you go to a store in Burlington, things are changing. Um, and the question has been, uh, we and we we dealt with this subject earlier this spring and we, we voted to stay um, virtually through our meetings. But Here now the question. Me, I make a motion that we go back to in-person meetings. Thank you. Second. Okay, so motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Um, well, let me ask you this question. I'll ask. So we have a meeting coming up on the 28th. Can we just clarify it would be for our next board meeting? Correct. Okay. Any other discussion, board members? Which is for July. Well, no, we have a, we're going to have a meeting on the 28th of June, Taylor, for a personnel committee, which would be closed session, just to be clear uh, for those watching. Uh, but our next meeting for the public would be our July, I believe it's July 12th, second Monday in July. That'd be our well, next open probably, session meeting. Up for the opening of the meeting, they'd have to leave after that. That's true. They'd be welcome to come, right? Thank you for that clarification. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for our roll call vote. Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yes. Susan. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, next item is public comment at board meetings. And specifically why this is added to the, the agenda was first to point out we have a policy which is attached to our agenda so we can see that. And that will be something we'll make, um, we'll add as a reminder uh, before our, our next um, meeting, which I think will be helpful for members of our public to Remember our protocols for how public comments made in person at the meeting, but also the other 
interesting thing I'd like for the board to give feedback on and, and discuss and decide. We are using board comments. And my thought is that I'm interested in keeping that going. Um, I think some people may not be able to attend the meeting. And I think having another way for members of the public to communicate to board members is valuable. And I've enjoyed reading the emails and people can attach things to them. I, I, I read those too. Um, so I would like the board to make a motion on whether we continue with the public, excuse me, the board comments via email. Uh, so I would forward. push in that we would allow board comments via email, but I do not believe they should be read aloud unless they are there in person. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of with Kevin on this one. I mean, we've always had email comments come in as long as I've been on the board. So, uh, I mean, they're just comments to the board. They're not specifically for the public comment section of the meeting. And I guess, of course, I would add that to my motion that they have to list their name and their address and allow us to verify them individually. And it should be timed. In discussing this with other boards this weekend, they have two minutes or three minutes. And I think we always have allowed three minutes, but they said, boy, at the end of that time, they have to stop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But let's go back. So Kevin, you've made a motion and we can recap it again, but we're waiting for a second on that. So um, maybe Kevin, do you want to recap your motion? Yes. Yeah. My motion is that we allow board comments. They will not be read aloud. People that speak at the board meeting have three minutes and will list their name and address and limited to three minutes. And I'll, okay, go ahead on that. Let's ask for a second for that. I second the motion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. I'll, I'll point out, Kevin, in our, in our policy, we do require that people state their name and address. And they have three minutes. It's in our policy, so I think that's covered so already. We have not always adhered to that. Yeah, and so we will be careful going forward. That's your obligation to take care of that. Yep, and we'll we'll come up with a process for that so that it's you know welcoming, but yet that we are conducting our meetings efficiently and thoughtfully. Correctly. Um, one question though I have is on our board comments. Then we're also requiring that they list their name and address. Correct. Okay. You know, another thing though, you may want to consider because I believe our public comments can be from people who either reside in the district or have students in the district. So it's possible you may live in a, out, uh, you may have an outer district address, but have a student. Then I wonder we'll if have, we, we'll have to look for clarification on that. Or maybe if we have a, a, a statement at the top of board comments that please, you know, check a box or I wonder if there's something we can do to make it easy for people. That's a good point. That'd be good. Yeah, and I, I think I, my, my thought on this is I'm open to people from out of the district or who don't have kids in the district sending us emails, I and mean, we can't stop that. But then that would give board members the opportunity if they want to read them or not. Yes, correct. Yeah. Obviously, if we have a school choice student, we certainly should be reading that. That's very important. They're, yeah. they're valuable to our community. Yeah, so that's something I guess we could work on logistically on, on our board comments, but I think the idea is let's keep the board comments up and running with a specific website for them. Correct. Okay. Barry, you have a question or uh, comment? Uh, just, you know, just foreshadowing my vote. I, this motion really is necessary because we already allow email comments. So, I mean, we're not really accomplishing anything here. People can already email us. We, we, that's true, Barry, but me personally, if, if they're not in our district or they're not, a member of our school district because of school choice, I personally am not reading them. Understood completely. I get that. I'm just saying I don't think we need a, an approval to let people send us emails. They already send us emails. I think it's a great point to make that if they're not going to state that their communities, that they're residents or members of the school district community, that you know, right. they may not be read. I appreciate Feel free that. as a school board member can read the Wall Street Journal and infiltrate it as you want to. But I personally, if it doesn't address this district, it's not coming to the board meeting. 
Yeah, you make a fair point, Barry. I think maybe the idea, though, is that we're leaving up this specific board comments uh, website that goes to all the board members. And maybe we put something on our district website that makes clear, here's how to send emails to the board. And like we said, make sure to include your name and address or make sure you check a box if you have a student residing here. Um, it's just more formalizing that process because there were some gaps in the process when we went virtually here. That's where, that's where this is coming from. Yes, true. Thank you, Barry. Is there any other comment on this? Otherwise, I guess I'd like to, any discussion? Yeah, Barry, go ahead. Last thing, we're just amending policy then. So we have to, do we have to do the readings and all the other stuff with this? I don't know for- knows more, tell me. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd agree we're amending policy because our policy is staying the same, which addresses public comment at board meetings, um, which I view as people getting up and speaking um, as opposed to a board comment. It could be policy though. I mean, maybe it's something that we add as a policy measure, which would mean a different process, right? As opposed to a motion. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not in favor of more paperwork. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I know. Basis. I, I, Barry, I'm going to advocate that we keep it simple and just make a motion and then we, we'll implement it and see where we go. Sounds good. All right. Uh, let's have a roll call vote then. Toby, would you be honest? Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yes. Susan? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Last item for action should be a pretty easy one. It's the annual meeting date. Um, our administration is recommending that we set it for Monday, September 13th. I make a motion. We approve that even though it's my birthday. Second. It's your birthday? But I want birthday cake. Oh. <laughs> You're going to have to ask for an amendment now. I already seconded the motion. <laughs> Excuse me. Any further discussion? And yeah, happy birthday, Kevin. That's a <laughs> in advance. That'll be fun. <laughs> Hearing none, I'll call for a roll call vote. Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Roseanne? Yes. Susan? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, last item is uh, future meeting dates. Uh, if you look at the comment, we have our personnel and school board meeting coming up on July 12th. It'll, it'll now be in person. Um, information on location will be coming out on that. But I also want to add the we're going to have a, a, a personnel committee meeting closed session, at least after we vote to go in closed session, Kevin, um, on June 28th. And that will also be in person uh, location to be to be determined. And hearing that's it, so I, I guess I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Peter? Yes. Barry? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Kevin? Hallelujah. Roseanne? <laughs> yes. And Susan? Yes. Thank you. See you, everybody. I'm going to miss the Zoom. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Good to see you.